name is Tomas. Uh, I'm with SoftServe for two years now uh, as an application architect. Uh, and today I'm planning to present you something called Glamour's Toolkit. Mm -hmm. And I I will assume you don't know what it is and or even didn't hear the name before um, this uh, presentation was announced because that's a relatively new, um, new thing. Uh, and it's not very popular as far as I can tell. Um, and actually, it's not like I can say you're gonna need it for the you know for your work uh, from uh, from now on, but I think it's interesting enough uh, so that you at least know that something like this exists, right? Uh, so the main uh, uh, my uh, main motivation for that was not that I want to uh, persuade you to uh, to use it, uh, rather just make you curious about it because. That's where I am. I'm not a heavy user of this um, of this toolkit. I'm rather a, a fan for now. So, yeah, uh, I assume uh, we can start now. Uh, I have an agenda slide which is you know mandatory. So I'm gonna talk about about what Glamour's toolkit is, uh, and it's gonna be relatively hard because uh, this is the concept of like self-defining um, environment where we can you know mold it. Uh, and change it to our needs on the way. So it's kind of self-explanatory and, you know, like like recurrency basically uh, when we uh, talk about what it is. So, but there's gonna be a short history. Uh, I'm gonna talk about small talk, but do not be scared. I'm not a small talk developer, uh, never was, uh, but small talk is relatively important if you want to work with this um, toolkit. I'm gonna explain the moldable development, what it is, uh, what it is not, uh, and uh, then I'm gonna show you uh, what we can do in the tool itself. The uh, slides are like few. I know if I have made like 50, uh, 50, sorry, five uh, slides um, in total, because the main uh, uh, what I want to show you is how the tool looks, and. Uh, Basically, uh, most of the info that you find here, you also find in the tool itself when you download it, uh, because it has great documentation and because it's so versatile, it can also, uh, or it is self-documented and you can also do presentations in it if you want. You can have like live demos and everything you would normally do in a presentation, but without you know leaving the leaving the toolkit, which is the the selling point basically uh, of them. So the I want didn't want to, you know, just by copying to uh, um, to PowerPoint, uh, didn't want to spoil the um, fun. So, uh, so that's the uh, the agenda. Uh, as promised, the oh, sorry, that was too fast. Uh, the historical background, and so basically, the tool itself is developed by a company named Fang. They're from Switzerland. Uh, they do it for now 14 years. Uh, at least the uh, the idea behind it has been developed for uh, 14 years. Six years ago, they started development and finished with the version uh, or finished the version one two was published like December, I believe, or or October last year. And uh, it took them so long, <laughs> so to say, uh, partially because uh, it's a tool that they use for their normal. Um, work or the normal um, offering that they do and they do consulting a lot um, and for this consulting they um, used a framework which they called moldable development and moldable moldable development is actually as far as i can tell a term coined by them uh, which is describing how they do uh, systems analysis they do systems of course we mean here uh, software systems analysis and they have this uh, rather interesting, uh, uh, um, uh, rather interesting way of doing this analysis, and then presenting the tools, and then creating tools for the analysis themselves. Uh, and like I said, the currently released version one is something that they use uh, every day uh, for their uh, um, for their day to day job, and something. Basically, I assume they want to sell or make the idea also uh, more popular so they can have uh, support from the community. Um, it's a MIT license and open source, so 
I believe that's something they um, uh, that's the main goal uh, um, of the announcement. Uh, and basically, it's till now something uh, very limited to people dealing with small talk. Yeah. The other languages uh, that will um, or that can be used uh, are somewhat uh, extra extras, uh, but that's a technicality. I'm gonna talk about the other. So the tool itself is, I would say, uh, mature um, enough. Uh, you can download it. That's a executable. You can run in your machines. When we talk about uh, mm, software machines, you might get into trouble with uh, Microsoft defenses. Uh, and you need to persuade uh, the defender that it's like a, a legit uh, piece of software. Uh, I haven't included the links, uh, but you know, Glamorous Toolkit returns very few uh, um, hits uh, in Google, so you can easily find it yourselves. Okay, so that's the boring part is over now. So um, I mentioned small talk, uh, which is bit of a lie because uh, I know if you if you ever any of you uh, worked with uh, small talk or any you know pure uh, object oriented um, um, language uh, the toolkit is actually built uh, in Faro, which is a pure object oriented small talk system so it, it's not small talk per se it's called sometimes a, a, a modern uh, version of small talk which is encapsulated in the system, which means it's not only like the language, like compiler, like we used to know, uh, but it's also a whole development uh, uh, or integrated development environment. Uh, and it's developed like in itself. So uh, the closest, uh, closest uh, analog I would see here is uh, Eclipse, uh, which was or is still uh, written in Java, supports Java uh, very well, and is built on um, on a multitude of plugins. Uh, so this concept is similar, I would say, only here except plugins, we work on the living system, uh, basically. So we can, you know, um, we, from the technical point of view, all the classes that constitute Faro environment, uh, are also accessible and can be changed on the fly, so to say. So you can basically change your uh, um, change your uh, editor at the very moment you're working with it, uh, which is kind of the idea what they want to achieve uh, with this tooling. But uh, you're not limited to Faro. So uh, although it is relatively easy to learn when it comes to syntax, it's, I even put a, a screenshot here of the um, famous postcard size, which contains, I mean, this piece of code contains all the um, syntax uh, elements that uh, Faro. And I will show you this uh, live because this screenshot was taken from the toolkit itself, from the documentation part, and it's all um, um, interactive. So this card, so whenever I choose anything here, I can see if that's a keyword, if it's a unary or binary operator. Basically, Faro, uh, in Faro, everything is either an object or a message. So, so it's very, at a very high level, that's basically it. Uh, it is very, uh, mm, I mean, at least for me, without uh, um, uh, previous experience with it, uh, it sounds very, uh, technically or nerdy, I would say, uh, but that's how it is. Uh, this is not a popular uh, technology nowadays. Yeah? And and yes, to use uh, Glamour Toolkit effectively, which I honestly am not at this point yet, is that knowing Faro is actually uh, very beneficial. Yeah? So to do anything um, useful and uh, to go uh, beyond uh, simple uh, pasting of snippets that we can use, but that's like a valid also way to work with it. But to do something um, serious, you need to invest some time in the um, in Faro, in learning Faro. Yeah. But yeah, uh, so that was the, again, the part that was not uh, very friendly maybe, but now for the moldable development. So that's the whole idea um, of this, um, of this talk and, uh, 
of this tool or maybe the the you know the pretext to um, to present you the tool is the idea of multiple development and that that here you can see that the um, that's a very pretty definition of it. Uh, so it's a systematic approach for understanding system by means of custom tools that we construct for every development problem. Uh, and what it means in praxis is that uh, whenever we work with a, a system as, let's say, well, devs, but also architects, uh, there are some statistics uh, which are, you know, as always, um, American scientists uh, say that <laughs> developers uh, spend uh, most of the time um, when working uh, on analysis of existing systems. So it's not only, okay, I need to, I know, develop a new uh, functionality or maybe uh, refactor something in existing systems or introduce new, uh, you know, uh, new, uh, uh, API, let's say, whatever it would be, first you need to understand what you're working with. And uh, with the systems being more and more complex, uh, the the uh, the problem arises that we need to understand the system, we need to understand the systems fast, and we need to also understand the systems evolving. And the usual way uh, when we are presented with such a system is uh, basically uh, a confluence or like a, a a version of that. Anyway, tons of text, right? Maybe some insight into uh, um, code base, which is also text, but with another editor then. And then we will have uh, people need to interact with, like some, I mean, if you have the chance uh, with users, which they also present you with uh, either, uh, you know, um, oral story uh, of the system, which you need to then um, document or uh, they provide you with their own notes and whatnot. So the idea is uh, we have this uh, most of, I mean, the, the fact that most of the time is spent reading through, uh, through text uh, and that reading does not scale, uh, which, which is a bottleneck when you're the person that needs to, you know, make sense of a system or that's interconnected to X other systems, or I know a class that's kind of uh, um, that may be embedded in like quite a few dependencies, and then you need to I don't know update a library, and you have like not very much idea of how it could affect uh, um, the system as a whole, right? And it's not really even your problem because you're a dev, and and you only need to you know get rid of this spring version because it's not safe because there was a vulnerability uh, found and you need to do things fast. Uh, so the approach that uh, was uh, developed by the uh, by the Spank company, this moldable development means we need uh, to have a tool to build out tools to understand. So so it's the, the glamour talking can be <laughs> seen as a um, kind of um, how would you say it? A uh, kind of meta tool. So we would build a throwaway tools uh, only for a specific problem, for a specific systems. Uh, and I will tell you what I mean, uh, or what is hidden behind that uh, shortly with some examples, so you can see how this can be useful. Even because I assume after my my introduction may not be yet clear. Uh, but the idea is uh, we don't need to um, read every time uh, the docu to see what's um, happening uh, in the system. We can proactively ask questions uh, um, to uh, uh, to the systems like how many uh, deprecated classes do I use and which of them are used in this or the other uh, um, this or the other uh, uh, package or are they correctly named and such analysis that you can just simply do fast. And there are, of course, tools that can do that. And I know if you heard about uh, Java and ArcUnit, that might be something that's uh, useful. But that's, again, uh, uh, an extra tool that's only used uh, useful in uh, tests. Uh, so you need to build tests for it and you need to kind of change context. The, here, the idea is we have everything together. We can document the system. Uh, we can do live analysis. We can try uh, on live code what the changes will uh, uh, or how the changes will uh, um, affect the behavior of the systems. You can have naturally some tests, and then 
I haven't seen it working when it comes to Java, uh, but there's of course some Git integration that you can then uh, push the changes and see how it behaves like in the wild. But the thing is um, you want to ask questions and whenever you were faced in a situation where maybe you need to talk to a stakeholder that's not very technical and you need to, for example, persuade them to uh, put some uh, effort and put some money uh, into refactoring because of, and then you want to explain them, okay, we have like a lot of deprecated code in this area, or we have like multitude of UI classes that could be like one class if we put some hours into it. And it, it's hard to be convincing if we only talk about you know, technical aspects. Um, this uh, glamorous toolkit can also be um, a tool to document and show and you know present in a understandable way uh, problems like this. Uh, so we can have uh, the audience uh, that's not very technical also benefit from that. I have one more slide about uh, slide about multiple development, and that's uh, something I took from the uh, company. I mean, the picture is from the company. Um, page that's uh, okay um i might have gotten the wrong version so um never mind the text on the left because it's uh, seemingly the same as on the previous but the picture here is the uh, the important one what they promise is uh, that uh, the standard approach uh, mm, to uh, to problem solving uh, when you come on, come in as a consultant is the manual inspection. It's it's like where we start. Um, then we try to uh, generate some um, manual views. We generate some code. And then from that, uh, we go into, uh, or from there, we uh, generate the views, which in this uh, nomenclature mean we basically uh, generate a new functioning system or new changed uh, system. So view here is regarded rather as uh, an application or uh, application build and not not necessarily a, a UI view. What they want to change is actually uh, disregard the manual part of it. So whenever we use uh, this, uh, this approach with multiple development, uh, we can do some specific coding that's going to address the specific issues that we have with the uh, with the system or the specific problem that we have with the system. Uh, do some rounds uh, about gathering data uh, and then work on this data to you know, build up and ask other directed question. And then from there, we can head directly to the uh, to a proposed solution. Uh, and the thing is, uh, we kind of get rid of the uh, uh, the rigid tools, as they said. So, um, everything I said before about uh, you know analyzing, uh, I know analyzing locks or refactoring or uh, looking for deprecated classes and their usage. That's all offering that we can find uh, currently in I know any uh, decent uh, IDE like IntelliJ does us of uh, like of the bat, and you can just uh, use the existing uh, tools for that. But that's uh, usually a plugin or maybe something from the uh, marketplace. And here, the um, the selling point of the multiple development is uh, you can do that on your own. You don't need to define a plugin. Use the marketplace. Uh, see if that fits your needs, and you know adjust to the tool and rather than to your specific uh, problem. Uh, for that, you can use multiple tools, uh, which is the Glamour's Toolkit are prime example of, or maybe the, the only one, uh, mm, where you build your tools on the fly and the whole idea is that it's cheap. So we can have our custom views, our custom analysis uh, done very easily because uh, there's a whole lot of support from the uh, built-in already in the Glamour's Toolkit. That's why it's Toolkit, uh, basically, because having some uh, views, some graphical representation, uh, fetching data from uh, uh, APIs uh, and quite a few other things we can do like with few lines of code. Of course, we need to know Faro for that, but that's uh, something different. Uh, and we're not limited here to Faro only or small talk. 
uh, there are uh, there is uh, this small talk cross compiler uh, in use and currently you can use rust you can use java you can use uh, javascript uh, and analyze this code bases within uh, within glamour toolkit and this should work fine okay okay so um this is a short summary uh, what we can do with the Glamour's toolkit, and after that, I believe we can go to the uh, we can go to the uh, Glamour's toolkit itself. So I can basically show you what I was just saying because I know it can be you know boring without pictures, and the tool defends itself. Uh, so we can do system documentation, which is very nice. Uh, Glamour's toolkit also has a. Uh, mm, documenting uh, feature or documenting uh, site, so to say. So we can have something like uh, Obsidian, uh, which was presented, I believe, uh, last year uh, in a very interesting uh, take. And Glamour Stulky can also do that. Um, but it can also uh, be enriched with uh, um, snippets and live code execution, uh, which means it's also something like Jupyter. Uh, I don't know if you know uh, Jupyter notebooks, uh, something used heavily in uh, uh, um, data um, data science and uh, Glamour Suki can do that, although it's not Python-based, but uh, as you know, <coughs> power-based. It can be used to personal knowledge management, it's, which is kind of, you know, like uh, both of those two uh, points uh, before getting together. Uh, we can do presentations in it, and I'll show you a short presentation about Faro in Faro, or sorry, uh, about Glamour's Toolkit. Um, mm, uh, we can do some uh, IP, I mean, interactive API browsing, uh, which is, a, I think, a good example of that, uh, how the tooling uh, crafted very, like, I mean, with some experience on the fly, um, how it can help you in the uh, long run. Um, we can do uh, some data explorations uh, using uh, uh, using the uh, Glamour's toolkit, uh, because uh, on one side uh, of the, uh, the support of the toolkit, which primarily means there are some ready-made uh, mm, classes that handle, I know, uh, data clustering, uh, some fetching data from uh, from repos, from APIs, uh, some data visualizations, it's all there. We all need to, you know, learn how to use it. And and with some practice, I believe that can be a, a good tool if that's somebody's uh, work or needs um, this um, kind of uh, help with, uh, um, in their work um, on a daily basis. Uh, we can do some advanced code analysis. Mm, I'm not gonna show you the advanced one because I'm not that far yet with the tool, uh, but uh, we can, for example, uh, gather some information about existing systems in Java. Uh, and here there's another uh, another extra step required we need to build uh, externally a uh, meta model of a uh, Java system, which can be then fed to um, Glamour's toolkit. But uh, from there, we can programmatically build our custom views, cu custom analysis, and some other things, which I hope to show you uh, later on. And, and now it's time to uh, show you how does the, um, how does the tool actually looks like. Um, that's a screenshot from the, um, from the tool from the uh, um, book that comes with it. And uh, when you start uh, your uh, Glamour Store Kit for the first time, what you see is uh, actually here on the left side, uh, we have few tools that can help you with uh, working. The most important are uh, Playground, Node, uh, Lepiter, which is um, an interactive uh, code editor. Coder that works with the uh, uh, with the code of the Glamour toolkit itself. Uh, uh, there's some Git integration. Uh, there are some more or less technical. I mean, uh, um, 
self-oriented tools like transcript file system uh, and spotter, which uh, can be used to work on the uh, Glamorous toolkit itself. So uh, there's there's also this more uh, advanced view, so to say, uh, whenever we use one of those tools uh, that talk about the VM, that's the, maybe I should have mentioned it uh, before, the Glamorous toolkit, whenever you run it, you run a virtual machine that, uh, uh, that has Faro on it. Uh, and you can control the environment of the uh, VM here. Uh, the, one of the, again, technical um, point is uh, whenever you define a class uh, in, uh, in Glamour's toolkit, this class becomes global. And whenever it becomes global uh, and you can work on it, means every change uh, will be done, uh, uh, like applied uh, on the fly which means we can, uh, which works on the system itself. And we can uh, mm, alter the behavior of the Glamour's toolkit by working on their internal classes and then you know, supply us extra views uh, and do some analysis. Um, I'm gonna show you the book in a sh uh, shortly, but first I need to uh, find there's, uh, there's a tour uh, here of the Glamour's toolkit. Um, and if we run it, you can see it's basically, I mean, what you see here is here is the class or the implementation of the Glamour Toolkit as a tool, which is nothing more as a presentation, basically. And presentation consists of few uh, node, uh, node fields uh, that have defined uh, their special uh, uh, Pragmas, which is again something uh, specific to um, Glamour Toolkit, uh, but the whole idea is it's all code beneath. Yeah, so you can either work on this uh, UI part where you define text and and can edit this at any point in time, um, or you can also look at the um, code of it and I don't know uh, find yourself a, a better uh, title for uh, um, for the uh, text that's found here. So here on the left, uh, that's again something a bit overwhelming, and I can't say I know exactly. I mean, I I know this part, <laughs> but that's basically uh, all the classes that consist uh, um, or from the uh, that the uh, glamorous toolkit consists of. So uh, whatever is here, um, you can basically, like I said, uh, change on the fly and apply it if you dare. Uh, and that will affect the uh, behavior of the uh, Glamour toolkit, which I'm not gonna attempt uh, because I would like to <laughs> show you something uh, functional. Uh, but let's go through the tour because it shows you uh, nicely the capabilities of these main um, elements that we have uh, seen before, this uh, coder, lepiter, and the other um, tools. So, uh, so this is uh, like the history uh, slide of the uh, about Glamour Tolkien. Uh, it's a bit more um, detailed than I told you before. So they started in 11 and now it's, uh, oh, it's August, sorry. So um, I got the news late um, about uh, Glamour Tolkien version uh, one zero. There was some works, uh, like I said, uh, on it uh, following, but I think the, the tool is gaining traction since like last year, maybe um, at least as far as I know. Um, it's not refreshing nicely, so it has still some um, issues with the uh, with the UI itself. But I believe it's only uh, another fine because before that thing will get um, fixed. Uh, there's going to be two slides about uh, how the uh, presentation of data data can affect uh, can affect your understanding uh, and the time you need to understand. So here are some. Uh, some things that you probably saw in one editor or another, right? Uh, there are some variables uh, with their values. There are some, um, I don't know, a, a simple uh, integer values, but shown in you know complicated way. Uh, there's some object views here. Uh, there's some, again, some variables that here, in this case, depict some um, a file, right? So there's a path, there's a file system, there's also content of the uh, file. The whole idea is that with uh, with Glamour Toolkit, you can turn it into um, a relatively nice presentation. And this presentation of you know this and this uh, 
I hope you can uh, see the difference or uh, can benefit from um, uh, from it, uh, how easy it is to read what the data represents. And the trick is Glamorous Toolkit can help you with that. Yeah. So here we have a, a graphic, uh, um, I mean, a, a graphic file with their content displayed. Here we have uh, um, it, like it's like the object that uh, or what the object is made of. Yeah. And how it can be uh, viewed. Uh, and we can create on not only use all this or all uh, like pre predefined views uh, for different kinds of data. Uh, we can also define our own, and that's basically the uh, the um, one of the most important things about uh, Glamour Toolkit. So, if you I don't know if any one of you work with uh, or worked uh, um, within um, Emacs, but it might be tempting to think that it's similar to Emacs in that regard that whenever you use it, I mean, you don't really need to leave the uh, the tool that you're working in. You can do basically anything uh, using yeah, well in uh, Emacs with some plugins, uh, in Glamour Toolkit in other ways, but basically you can do anything. You can document, you can write, you can communicate with, uh, you know, external world and you can write code and push it to GitHub and then also deploy it. And it's all gonna work, right? You can do, I know, I, maybe you come to that that we can do even uh, some uh, debugging or analysis of logs and all in one tool. Once we learn it, of course. So uh, as you see, um, here's the normal view or the um, the normal view how we use it in uh, in Glamour Toolkit. There's always this header where we can see different views, and there's also different actions. Uh, that we can do with the with the object uh, basically. So here's the preview. So here's the fun part. Here's the raw uh, one that we saw in the beginning. It's all you see editable. So if you have a, a um, element that's uh, that can be used to uh, uh, model graphs, then these elements are uh, then uh, editable, which means we can also do you know. Uh, this is a preview, this is a live one, and the object beneath it is getting updated. And if it's used elsewhere in your system, for example, you can see the changes uh, inflicted by it also um, on the fly. Yeah, so I'm gonna skip through because uh, we're running out of time and I thought we were gonna uh, finish early. So um, there's a slide about multiple development. Um, and again, uh, to reason about data, uh, the the key idea is to have uh, a specific view or see it through a lens that's specific to our problem, and we can build our uh, specific tools easily with Glamour Toolkit. Now there's the part about live programming and inspection, and that's where the Faro part magic comes in. Uh, that's the inspector view we saw it before on the um, when the presentation uh, were. Uh, Done. Uh, that's a, a GT address book. So Glamorous Toolkit uh, address book example. Uh, we have have different views on the same data, so to say. And if we uh, change the data, or maybe you know we can edit the uh, array content, we can feed it from uh, with a snippet of code, uh, feed it from I know external data, and then see different views on the same data, which. You know, might seem trivial when we talk about an address book, but uh, imagine you have like logs from different um, instances and you can build a view, so to say, to quickly compare uh, between what are the most problematic or most uh, coming up exceptions that we see in the logs, right? Depending on the uh, location or, you know, the, the the thing is we still work on data or we work on data like all the time and uh, we have a lot of tools to analyze them and and to make sense of them and comprehend them basically. So uh, Glamour Sulking might be uh, mm, might be a tool that unifies them and and you can have your own, so to say. Yeah, um, and it sounds really like Emacs now, but yeah. Okay, uh, so this is an example how you build uh, this view. Uh, so this view that we had here. Uh, 
there's an implementation behind it. And implementation is basically implementation of a view. As you see, it's all interactive. Even now, um, can show me that okay, a GT view is the pragma. Pragma says uh, is an information for the uh, toolkit that we're building here a view. So it's gonna be built up in the uh, nice um, picture, uh, uh, nice uh, window. Uh, Fun fact, there are no model uh, windows in uh, Glamorous Toolkit. Everything is non-model, so no blocking. Uh, and for a reason, they're pretty pretty uh, proud about it. So I mentioned that. But OK, uh, so there's view, there's column list. So um, as you can see, uh, it's even if you don't know uh, Faro, uh, like I basically also <laughs> No, I wouldn't say I'm, I'm an expert on that. Um, you can fairly easily understand uh, what you um, um, what you're dealing here with. Yeah. So this is how uh, it looks like. Uh, if we can try to uh, uh, and there's UI. Just like I thought, it won't work like this. <laughs> Sorry, uh, mm, but we would need to use the object inspector because that's a uh, mm, that's a, a static view that was um, created beforehand. But um, I work on a instance now that's live, and I'd say I don't want to do it. Okay, playground is uh, again um, another. Uh, part of the uh, glamour toolkit uh, where you can simply put your uh, information in uh, also do some simple development uh, so it's basically from functionality on uh, jupyter notebook uh, you can add uh, new snippets here uh, it can be faro so it can be code picture and element it, they all come with their own set of um, extra um, mm, extra behavior that's implemented already. And you can, of course, uh, implement more. Everything here is uh, mm, live. So whenever I do uh, um, calculation, I can do inspect. And, uh, and I was expecting to see the result, but I broke something in the... Uh, don't. Okay, so no. Oh, maybe we need to evaluate this first, and then we can see in the inspector. That's our integer. That's the result. So my bad. Um, I try to evaluate this uh, without prior, uh, um, without assigning the value to the variable beforehand. So here we have a small integer, which is again a class that's also. Um, implement some views. Some are uh, meta and print. These are all kind of uh, coming from the uh, base class, but the integer view, that's something made specifically for small integer uh, class. And we can also uh, edit the class itself uh, like this. And if you wanted to, uh, we can do, <coughs> we can uh, here implement like Yet another view, I know, let's say in uh, there's octal hex, I know if you want to uh, binary, I know, trinary, whatever. Whatever would be fitting for your case because it might be a specific uh, like enum, which has values that's very specific for your use case. You can do also that. And that shouldn't also uh, take long uh, once you're acquainted with the tool. Mm. Okay, uh, we have some um, inspectors. Uh, inspector is something that I showed you when uh, running the code. Uh, but uh, what do you see? Let's inspect. Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, this code uh, is creating a view, and then uh, GT pragmas it simply lists all the pragmas which we saw with this uh, hash at the beginning, uh, which are the available uh, pragmas um, in. Uh, Glamour Toolkit, which means that once you building your own views, you can look through them. Uh, so it's kind of a live documentation of the system that you're running. I mean, the, from the uh, uh, Glamour Toolkit uh, running. And 
I hope it's clear at this point that uh, you basically working on an open heart right now. Yeah. So uh, whatever you do, um, you need to take into account that uh, you can always look directly into the code that you're running. And by that, I mean the Glamour toolkit itself and you can modify it and then you can expect it behaves um, the way you uh, want to. Uh, okay. Uh, Here's another example. We can just run it, but that's uh, we don't have time to analyze what's happening here. Anyways, here's the playground. In the playground, you can uh, run some interesting uh, or not so interesting uh, stuff. Uh, and then once you have some, um, in this case, uh, a list built, uh, you can, of course, inspect it, right? And then you can have metric hierarchy for it of the pills. So, and then you all these objects can then lead to other objects. You can add new uh, filter. There's a lot of uh, possibilities that you can um, pursue here, but I will speed up now because of the uh, limited time. And I want to show you one more thing. Uh, Tomasz, yes. we still have uh, 15 minutes. Everything's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, but uh, I want to go through the tour and then show you um, the example of uh, reading GitHub API, API and I'm gonna need like five minutes for that. So, but yeah, thanks for that. Um, so let's see if we can, um, okay. Spotter is the tool that's used to uh, search for stuff within the whole system. Uh, and I'm having some issues here now with this because it's stop responding. Okay, live documents is also something that we saw, uh, I think, before. This is an example of a live document. That's uh, the Glamorous Toolkit uh, book. Um, we saw it uh, quite a, already at the beginning. That's that's exactly this uh, object. And it contains a whole lot of um, info about uh, uh, the Glamorous Toolkit, the Faro, uh, and a lot of documentation and some examples that I'm gonna show you directly from here. And basically, I wouldn't even have to do the uh, the slides for the presentation except for the company logo because it's all here and it's all interactive and can be you know shown. And it's probably much better explained than what I'm trying to do here, uh, except that maybe it's too, uh, too much uh, for like an hour or two um, explanation. So if, if you get interested, I strongly encourage to take a look at it. Um, it is very, interesting stuff but let's head uh, and by the way this object glamorous toolkit book is now uh, it was embedded here um, on this slide but i'm still on the in this tour so here's another example on oh you can see it because of the uh, screen sharing uh, part uh, here is an example of this uh, view for the classes so it's a code editor and then this class with its document documentation. So that's something, I mean, imagine you're using uh, um, IntelliJ and then you're working uh, on the, I don't know, editor view class, whatever this name is, and you're working on its like life code. Yeah? So so that's basically uh, the idea here. You, you get your tool and you get it fully documented and you can also uh, apply changes to it however you want. So. Here's uh, yeah, some summary. It's a platform implemented in Faro, but can work with um, other languages. I think I mentioned that it can work with JS. Uh, what we need is basically this um, small CC. It's for small talk cross compiler. It can work with, um, I mean, there are implementations for Python, for Java, for JavaScript. There's also uh, a thing called tiny parser, which you can use for uh, defining your own uh, little uh, parsers, which is very nice uh, thing to do uh, once you uh, get acquainted with it because you can then have like a SDL for your logs, let's say. Yeah. And then you can easily import data and work on them um, as you would do uh, with Faro objects and then you can do anything you want with them <clears throat> in Glamour's toolkit. Here's an example, you can uh, run it. That's It's just downloading some uh, random code from uh, GitHub, and that's a JS module node code. So it's not code itself, but we can compose of it uh, like 
functioning uh, programs. Uh, and you can have different views on it. And that's one of the examples how uh, you can analyze code. Uh, there's not much here happening because it's not done for that, but you have the like the source code of the file, but you have Explorer which tries to build you some structure for it, right? And and then you have uh, constants and then you could maybe uh, mm, try to analyze how many uh, mm, how many constants are defined in your uh, project and are there somewhat uh, are they in some place uh, um, central or are they distributed or do you have some oddballs that don't follow the structure? That's all you can do because you're working on now uh, on objects that represent classes of, uh, um, in this case, JavaScript, right? And, and you have tools uh, in Glamour's Loki to, uh, for analysis of that. There's some graphical stack. Uh, the, that's also a, a strong point of the uh, Glamour's Toolkit because uh, you have quite a lot of graphical, I mean, ready-made graphical views uh, and visual JSON that you can use for your uh, um, for your um, needs. Uh, I know what the data represent and where does it come from, but assume you'll have like, it might be like live uh, um, content of a, uh, of a hash map. Right, for example, and you can try to look how many, I know you have instances of uh, stuff that's above five or or whatever uh, um, attribute value you might imagine. You can do such analysis. You can do it, uh, like I said, with live code if you run um, yourself some uh, test instances. And it's kind of like a debugger on steroids because uh, it's much more capable of what you can use in IntelliJ, for example, yeah? where you, Basically, you don't get this nice visual visualization, or at least I don't know of any uh, plugin that would support that. And if it is, it's usually uh, very narrow uh, um, oriented, like for uh, databases, uh, where where you can have some support from that. Here you can just build it on your own, and like I said, uh, I'm sure I didn't convince you that it's easy, but it's not a lot of code as long as you use the ready-made uh, ready visualizations in the app. And that's it for the uh, for the tool um, itself. Uh, one more thing I want to show you and then I'm done is the uh, example of uh, uh, reading uh, um, GitHub API. And it's right here somewhere, uh, tutorials. Yeah, so working with the REST API, um, here's how um, such a work could, uh, um, such an attempt could look like. Um, the idea is here, uh, we have a, a GitHub API uh, and we want to, you know, learn more about it. You can, of course, go to a um, GitHub page, uh, click through it, see a list of um, of the repos, uh, see whatever um, what the owners are, what is the history of them, the issues, and whatnot. But that's actually data, right? You could gather data and maybe present in some other way. Maybe you want to do uh, this analysis for, I don't know, a customer that has multiples uh, um, of it, and you want to gather some data. So that would be pretty... Uh, um, pretty uh, tiresome to do by hand. Uh, and you you can use uh, Glamour Suki to do just that. Uh, and that's how it looks like uh, in the form uh, we're working now in the uh, uh, in the uh, note. Uh, so that's the interactive uh, mm, mm, interactive editor, uh, not uh, sorry, uh, interactive notes. Uh, and you can just scroll through it and just, you know, say, I want to see how this uh, pans out. So that's what I got. Um, that's the list of, uh, uh, I mean, the, that's the raw JSON response from the uh, from GitHub. We got HTTP, 25 headers, whatnot, the contents of it. So uh, we get the JSON here. So let's see, uh, it did work. Uh, we create a ZN client is a, um, mm, is a class that allows us to work with uh, JSON data. So that's something uh, that we have uh, at this point in time. We got some, you know, JSON. Um, we built a dictionary from this JSON. 
So now it's uh, divided into items and their uh, values. Remember, we can still uh, look or pick behind it and put some code in it and, uh, and put some code and use it. Here we built a GitHub organization. It's already built, uh, but if it wasn't, there would be uh, a sign here, like um, a small wrench, like build me a class. And it will assume a lot, uh, but basically you can do it on the fly, like creating new documents. So at this point we have this data, this dictionary data uh, wrapped up as, an, um, as a proper class. Um, and we, now we can do uh, uh, some uh, toolkit magic and say, okay, uh, we now have uh, um, this events, raw data and whatnot. And then you, uh, what happens when you click on a repository, right? So I want to click on a repository and see, okay, so now I am in a class called GH repo. That's also, also, of course, something prepared uh, by the demo makers. It's not built, I mean, it is built now in uh, in every Glamorous Toolkit um, implementation because like I said, the classes are global. Uh, but uh, as you see, you have a tool to look through GitHub uh, like in a um, nice way. Uh, you have the contributors, you probably can look into a contributor and then you have like the events associated with him, his avatar and raw data, whatever we know about it. So imagine you're looking for a um, code base that you don't know, uh, you're rather a new client and they have their own um, um, uh, repo that you can um, explore this way. It doesn't have to be GitHub, of course, uh, it's gonna work with GitLab exactly uh, the same, but then you need to uh, do your own wrapping. And uh, of course the APIs will change a bit, but that's nothing um, that you know should be too hard uh, once you put your hands on it. So yeah, looking at the time, I would say uh, I'm done. Uh, I'm, no, it might sound a bit uh, um, chaotic, uh, what I was talking about. Uh, like I said, I'm more a fan uh, than a, um, heavy user uh, of the Glamour Toolkit. I'm still exploring it. I'm still learning uh, Faro uh, to be able to, you know, um, work on my own. But basically even with my limited knowledge and with my limited uh, uh, ability to, you know, use the snippets and do the analysis, it's fairly easy to start data analysis and uh, API analysis. Yeah, I'm still working on the Java part because that's a more complex workflow. workflow. Uh, but apart from that, uh, I really uh, enjoy the tool. Uh, I, I buy the idea of multiple uh, development and I hope I can use it by cli with clients because that's like another talk. <laughs> and 